Welcome to our first episode dito sa Libring Sit-In. This time, we are going to discuss Industrial Organizational Psychology or IO Psych for short. So, kapag maririnig nyo yung Industrial Organizational Psych or IO, no? pareho lang yon para mas madali na lang sabihin, shortcut IO Psychology. If you're going to get a typical textbook on IO Psychology, this is one of the books. Sinulat ni Paul Levy, entitled Industrial Organizational Psychology, Understanding the Workplace. Meron akong issue on the title of this book, specifically doon sa kanyang subtitle, Understanding the Workplace. Kasi kung aaralin mo kung ano ba talaga ibig sabihin ng IO as a field, it means more than just understanding the workplace. So as we go along this lecture, malalaman ninyo why IO is more than just understanding the workplace. Basically, IO psychology starts with this idea. Walang IO psychology if we don't believe this idea. Work is very big part of the human life. Kaya ginawa natin yung IO psychology kasi naniniwala tayo na yung work, yung trabaho ng mga tao, malaking parte niyan o malaking parte ang buhay natin, nagtatrabaho tayo. So this is where IO psychology starts. Take for example these statistics. Pinapakita dito sa statistics na basically sa buhay daw ng tao, 8.9 hours tayo nagtatrabaho. Average, every day. Until the day you die, more or less 8.9 hours a day. Pero syempre, alam naman natin na hindi ito ganun ka-accurate because minsan nag-overtime ka. Minsan nag-uuwi ka ng trabaho sa bahay mo. So yung 8.9 hours na yan, madadagdagan pa yan. In terms of the time that you spend working. In fact, medyo outdated na nga itong figure na ito. No? This is on 2014. Ito mas recent. Ito, I think this is 2019. People spend ilang hours daw? 19.1% of our life working. 19.1%. Second, ito sa sleeping which is 38.1%. But then again, hindi naman tayo eksakto laging 8 hours a day nagtatrabaho. Many people, because they want to Uh, gain more money because they have a lot of things to do in their work require more than 8 hours. So, ang mangyayari dyan, kukuha ka ng oras from sleep, ilalagay mo doon sa time to work. Kaya ako, ang estimate ko, yung 19.1% na yan, underreported. ba? Diba? Mas malaki pa yan. Siguro around, maybe, let's say, 25% of our life we spend in working. But depende pa yon yung 25% na yon if you are a workaholic or not. But the bottom line here is, again, tama yung statement dito that work is a very big part of the human life. And that is the reason why we need IO psychology. Okay? Now, did you know, trivia, na ang konsepto ng work o ang pagtatrabaho, very biblical. Book of Genesis pa lang, meron ng concept of work. Genesis 1.26, God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over fall of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Nasaan yung konsepto ng work dyan from the word dominion? Diba? Para pangunahan mo yung mga bagay na sinabi dyan, yung fish of the sea, fall of the air, the cattle, the earth, para pangunahan mo sila, para ilid mo yung mga bagay na yan, you need to work. That is hard work. So, one of the reasons bakit ginawa ang tao is, in a way, to work so that humans can have dominion over all these things na nakasulat sa Genesis 1.26. In another passage of the Bible, Genesis 2.15, medyo fast forward, the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and keep it. So, isa sa mga reasons bakit ang tao nilagay sa garden para magtrabaho siya doon. Para pangalagaan niya yung Garden of Eden. So, that's again another clear concept of work in the book of Genesis. Now, even in the New Testament, fast forward mo, from Old Testament to New Testament, work is considered to be essential or even necessary For our life, sabi ni St. Paul yan. For even when we were with you, anong sinabi niya? 
we gave you this rule. The one who is unwilling to work shall not eat. Kung gusto mong kumain, kinakailangan mong magtrabaho. Ang tanong, tuwing kailan mo ba kailangan kumain? Sagot, araw-araw. Therefore, kailan mo kailangan magtrabaho? Araw-araw din. So that means work is indeed a very big part of our life. So that idea that work is a big part of our life, hindi lang siya psychological, it is also biblical. So going, going back to that question na pinag-uusapan natin, what is IO psychology all about? After all these things that we have been discussing about work, what is IO psychology? Let's consider the definition of APA, the American Psychological Association, kung ano raw ibig sabihin ng IO psychology. The specialty of IO psychology is characterized by the scientific study of human behavior in organizations and the workplace. The specialty focuses on deriving principles of individual, group, and organizational behavior and applying this knowledge to the solution of problems at work. So medyo mahirap o mahaba yung definition ng APA. I just want to make it simple. What is IO psychology? In IO psychology, we study the relationship between psyche and the workplace. Yung dalawang yan. Psyche, ito yung pinag-aaralan natin sa psychology, the spirit of the person. Ano ang relasyon niya sa lugar kung saan siya nagtatrabaho or the workplace? Diba? Bidirectional yan. Psyche to the workplace, workplace to the psyche. Ano ang epekto ng psyche ng tao sa workplace? At ano yung mga bagay-bagay sa workplace na nakaka sa psyche ng tao? That's what IO psychology is all about. Yun nga yung sinasabi kong issue ko doon sa libro ni Paul Levy, doon sa kanyang subtitle, Understanding the Workplace. I think that's very one-sided. Diba? In IO psychology, we, we don't only study the workplace as it as it relates to the psyche kung paano yun naapektuhan yung psyche ng tao pero yung kabilang direction tinitignan din natin yun sa IO psychology how the psyche affects the workplace so medyo one-sided yung sinasabi dito ni Paul Levy but basically that's what IO is about the bidirectional relationship between the psyche and the workplace Yan yung pinag-aaralan natin in IO psychology. Now, let me give you some examples. Ano ba itong mga relationship between the psyche and the workplace that we talk about in IO psychology? Halimbawa, we talk about motivation at work. O sa Tagalog, yung motivation, gana. Diba? Hindi naman kasi lahat ng tao na nagtatrabaho ay eh, ganado magtrabaho. Some people, they love Sunday because the next day, they're going back to their work na ganadong ganado silang gawin. But I think mas marami yung mga tao na ayaw ng Sunday, especially Sunday night, because they know next day, they're going to work again. Diba? So, that's one of the things pinag-uusapan sa IO psychology. Paano mo ba namomotivate yung isang worker to do what he does every day? Diba? Sabi nga ng isang author, the only way to do great work is to love what you do. Motivation at work is very important because it will affect the quality of your work. Kasi kung ganadong ganado ka sa trabaho mo, ganadong ganado kang gumupit ng buhok, ganadong ganado kang mag-serve ng pagkain, ganadong ganado kang uh, magbenta ng insurance, gumaganda yung output ng trabaho. Pero ang problema nga, not all people are motivated to work. Some people, talagang kinakailangan mo pa silang itulak, kinakailangan mo pa silang i-convince to work, so they will work. And these are the people na most likely, yung kanilang mga outputs, yung kanilang mga produkto sa kanilang trabaho, hindi magaganda. So we have to understand how motivation works. In the first place, ano ba ang nagpapamotivate sa mga workers? sa mga empleyado. Bakit ba ang isang barbero sumisipag sa paggugupit? Bakit ba ang isang maintenance sa isang building, eh gusto niyang linisin yung buong building at ganadong ganadong siyang gawin yun, no? What are these things that we can do to make people motivated to work? We talk about that in IO Psychology. Pinag-uusapan din sa subject na ito yung work stress. 
definitely if there's work, there's stress. Di ba? Very connected yung word na stress sa trabaho. I would say 50% of the stress that we experience in life nang gagaling yan sa trabaho natin. Sabi nga ng isang author, working hard for something we don't care about is called stress. At maraming ganyan, di ba? Ayaw mo sa trabaho mo o marami kang mga bagay na ayaw na nangyayari sa trabaho mo and that gives you stress. Siguro yung katabi mo sa opisina, na balitaan mong pinagchichismisan ka, stress yon Yung work demand, di ba? Ang kaya mo lang gawin, eh, isa-isang araw, let's say level 5, pero ang nire-require sa'yo ay level 9. Kaya napipilitan kang mag-uwi ng trabaho sa bahay. Habang nagdi-dinner ka, eh, nagtatrabaho ka pa rin. Bago ka matulog, nagtatrabaho ka pa rin. Pagising mas umaga, bago ka pumasok sa office, magtatrabaho ka pa rin. That will give you a lot of stress. Di ba? And the thing is, yung stress, it exists in all levels of a of an organization. Di ba? Mula sa naglilinis ng building hanggang sa CEO ng kumpanya, merong mga pinagdaraan ng stress yan. Di ba? So, we need to understand the nature of stress, how it affects people who work, and of course, what can we do to stress so that magiging maganda yung ating working life. We talk about that in IO Psychology. Another topic, work ethic. Dito pinag-uusapan natin yung paano mo gawin yung trabaho, yung kalidad ng trabaho mo. One author said, you can't have a million dollar dream on a minimum wage work ethic. Merong mga tao talaga na dahil mababa ang motivation to work, napipilitan lang to work. Ang resulta, yung work ethic nila pangit. Mabilis silang sumuko, mabilis silang naiinis sa trabaho, hindi sila matyaga whenever they encounter problems at work. Kasi nga, yung work ethic nila hindi maganda and this affects the quality of their output. Kaya hindi naging maganda yung kupit ng customer. Kaya hindi masyadong masarap yung pagkain na niluto ni chef. Kaya yung driver sa Grab, eh mali-mali kung saan dinadala yung, yung kanyang pasahero. Kasi pangit ang kanilang mga work ethic. But the good news is, we can do something to help people improve work ethic. Pinag-uusapan natin yan sa IO Psychology. Ano ba yung mga bagay-bagay na dapat inaalala natin to push ourselves to improve on our work ethic? We discussed that in this subject. And of course, hindi mawawala yung issue ng mga bossing diba? or leadership in the workplace. When you work for a company, for an organization, there will always be people higher than you. Nandyan ang supervisor, nandyan ang manager, nandyan ang COO, nandyan ang CEO. Now, the thing is, these are not only positions. These are not only labels. Eh. Itong mga positions na ito in the workplace, may epekto yan sa mga tao sa baba nila. How the leader behaves up there will affect the people working for that leader down there. So, kinakailangan maganda yung relationship between the boss and the employees. Unfortunately, eh, hindi naman laging nangyayari yan in companies, right? There are some companies, for example, araw-araw, nagpe-prayer meeting sila, pinagdarasal nila na yung boss nila mag na. Pero may mga kumpanya naman na kapag nabalitaan nila yung boss nila, will resign aba nagiiyakan kasi love na love nila yung boss nila so what's the difference between those two bosses bakit yung isang boss halos lahat ng empleyado niya galit sa kanya yung isang boss naman eh mahal na mahal siya idol na idol siya di ba it's very important for us to understand what will make employees like the boss kasi kapag Studies have shown na in I.O. literature, kapag maganda yung relationship between the boss and the employees, gusto na mga empleyado yung bossing, yung mga bossing, gusto rin niya yung mga empleyado, yung mga empleyado niya, nagiging maganda yung output ng kumpanya. Nagiging maganda yung mga, yung tinatawag nating work culture in that organization. The workplace becomes a positive place to be. People are excited to go to work. Kasi ang ganda-ganda, ang swabe-swabe ng relationship ng mga empleyado sa isa't isa, pati na yung kanilang relationship with their boss. IO Psychology has a lot of things to say on how to be 
a good boss on how to be a good leader to the people in an organization. So to make the long story short, uh, let's let's begin with the end in mind. Ang isang taong nag-aaral ng IO psychology, meron siyang isang skill na matututunan and that is how to make the psyche efficient at work. Paano mo ba gagawin yung ating psyche na maging magaling sa konteksto ng pagtatrabaho? Diba? Kaya tayo nag-aaral lang IO. That is the skill that we are developing here as psychologists. Making the psyche efficient in the field of work. Now, let me give you some examples of possible applications ng IO psychology para mas ma-appreciate nyo yung field. Halimbawa, meron ditong isang kaso. A team that sells condo units is not meeting the quota. All of them are talented and driven in their work. Okay naman yung kanilang work ethic. Okay naman yung work motivation. One problem they have is one of their teammates is not cooperating with other members of the team. He seems to be very dominant and encouraging and selfish. Makasarili in executing the plans made by the team. So if you are the leader of this team, or if you are a psychologist outside this team, kinausap ka ng boss ng grupong ito, ano yung may advice mo na dapat gawin to improve the performance of this team? Diba? Maraming tinuturo dyan ng IO psychology. So that's one benefit when you study IO psychology, you can solve these kinds of problems. Another example, Wilma, an office employee of a telecommunication company, is hated by many in her department. Maraming galit sa kanya. Bakit daw? This is because her office mates think that Wilma is easily promoted and given different perks not because she is efficient but because she is physically attractive. Kaya pala siya napopromote kasi parang gusto siya ng mga boss niya dahil sa kanyang kagandahan. Her workmates perceive that she is the favorite of the boss or the bosses in the office so she gets the perks that other deserve more. So yun naman pala, no? parang maraming natatapakan si Wilma dito na mas deserving at kaya daw niya nakukuha yung mga, yung mga perks dahil sa kanyang physical beauty. Actually, this is a classic case of office politics. Oh, kung ikaw ay isang psych major or isang psychology professional and you're advising this company, ano ang sasabihin mong dapat gawin? Ano yung mga improvement na dapat i-apply to deal with the case of Wilma? Because definitely, if you are in this situation, isa ka sa mga empleyado sa kumpanya na ito, aba, hindi maganda yung dynamics, hindi maganda yung relationship, di ba? Which is bad for the company. Another case, Company X has a very low retention rate. Ibig sabihin, uh, ng, ng low retention rate, bihira lang yung nagtatagal in this company. Compared to other companies, their employees are paid well. So, nakakapagtaka, Mataas naman ang sweldo dito, maganda ang package, pero walang nagtatagal sa kumpanyang yan. According to a manager of the company, one reason daw bakit ganyan is most of the employees feel they are overworked. Although mataas ang sweldo, masyadong maraming ginagawa yung mga empleyado. Not to mention that a lot of times, many employees complain about another manager who seem to be overly compulsive in dealing with them. So meron silang bossing na OC, Nagbibigay sa kanila ng stress, nagbibigay sa kanila ng mataas na pressure. His observation also tells him that it seems like the employees of this company seem not to like each other a lot. So other than ayaw nila yung bossing nila na compulsive, ayaw din nila yung isa't isa. So again, if you are a person who studied IO psychology, what would you advise this group? To do. Ano yung mga improvements na dapat gawin para mag-improve yung ganitong sitwasyon sa kumpanyang pinag-uusapan natin dito? So, those three different cases that I have mentioned are all specific examples on how IO psychology can help improve the workplace. Diba? Kapag nasolusyonan mo yung case 1, case 2, case 3 na yan, definitely yung mga workplace na yan will become more positive mas gaganahan yung mga empleyado na pumasok in these workplaces kapag inapalayan mo ng mga IO psychology principles. But you have to remember, 
making the psyche efficient at work, it's a very big skill. Diba? Masyadong ano yan eh, grand skill yan ng I.O. No? The thing is, for you to make the psyche efficient at work, kailangan matututo tayo ng mga smaller skills. Diba? Parang ano yan eh, parang pagbabasketball. Basketball or playing basketball is a big skill. Playing basketball involves you learning to do smaller skills with efficiency. Kailangan efficient kang pumasa, efficient kang dumipensa, efficient kang mag-shoot ng bola, efficient ka na mag-coach, efficient ka sa pag-aanalisa ng mga rules ng basketball, di ba? Pag natutunan mo yung mga maliliit na bagay na yon, then you will become a better basketball player. Ganon din sa IO, psychology. You want the psyche to be efficient at work. But to make that happen, merong mga maliliit na bagay na dapat kang gagawin leading to the psyche being efficient at work. Tulad ng, ano ba yung mga halimbawa na small skills na yan, which will be the subtopics that we will discuss in IO Psychology. We talk about recruitment. Paano ba pumili ng tamang aplikante to work for a company? Kasi tatandaan nyo, no? in IO Psychology, basic principle, selecting the wrong one is costly. Diba? Kapag ikaw pumipili ka ng mga tao na magtatrabaho sa kumpanya at hindi sila tama, hindi sila yung tamang tao na dapat mong pinili for that work, you will lose a lot of money. Training pa lang, eh, syempre. Diba? Bubunutin mo yan. O, mag undergo ng training yan. Papakainin mo sa training yan. Doon pa lang, nag-invest ka na. O. Pero after ng training niya, because that person is not the right person for the job, magkakalat siya after training. So, nasayang na yung pera mo sa training, at paglabas siya ng training, yung taong mali na yun, eh, mawawalan ka pa ng pera. In what way? Let's say, after ng training niya, o, pinakawalan mo na sa field, nakikipag-deal na siya with customers and with clients, hindi niya ginagawa ng maayos yung trabaho niya because again, he or she is the wrong person for the job. Mawawalan ka ng mga potential profits. ba? Diba? Dahil yung sinelect mo, eh, laging nakasimangot sa trabaho, habang nag nagsiserve siya ng food doon, ng, ng pagkain sa restaurant mo, maraming nabatip na customer sa kanya, yung mga customers na yon siniraan yung restaurant mo, Imagine, ilang customers yung dapat pupunta sa restaurant mo. Pero dahil sa bad service of that employee na kinuha mo, maraming tao hindi na pumunta sa restaurant mo, ang daming nawala sa iyo, di ba? So, parang dalawa ang black eye mo doon, no? Nagsayang ka ng pera sa training, nawalan ka pa, na, ka pa ng mga potential clients or potential customers. That's why you have to make sure if you own a company and people are selling themselves to you. you know? They are selling their services to you. How would you know kung sino ang tamang tao na pipiliin mo to work for you? Because that can make or break your company. That can make or break any companies. In fact, basa ka ng mga case studies ng mga kumpanya, marami mga kumpanya na sira dahil sa maling desisyon sa pagkuha ng mga empleyado. And IO Psychology teaches us what are the things to look for para masabi mo that an employee, an applicant, is the best person to be in that certain position. Tinuturo yan ng IO Psychology. Another small skill in IO Psych is how do you manage work stress? As I mentioned a while ago, work stress, we all have it. Diba? Mula sa naglilinis ng building hanggang sa CEO ng kumpanya, kanya-kanya tayong mga stress. Hindi talaga mawawala yan. That's why in IO Psychology, we, we don't aim to eliminate stress. Walang chapter sa IO Psych na libro na magsasabi how to stop stress because there will always be stress. As long as there is demand, as long as there is a person sensing the demand, laging merong stress yan eh. It's just a matter of paano mo i-manage yung stress. So wag nating pangarapin, wag nating ipagpray na mawala ang stress, no? Kasi habang buhay tayo, laging may stress, pero ipanalangin natin na matutunan natin through IO psychology how to manage it well. Because the thing is, kapag hindi ka marunong mag-manage ng stress, it will affect your efficiency. 
most people, kaya hindi efficient sa trabaho, hindi maganda ang pag-manage ng stress. Like, paano ba nakaka-apekto ang stress sa tao that it affects our efficiency, bumabagsak yung ating kalusugan. ba diba? Kapag masyadong mataas ang stress, ang dami-dami nating mga sakit na lumalabas. Nagkaka-ulcer ka, tinatamaan ka ng asma mo, yung mga sakit mo noon, na akala mo magaling na, lumalabas na naman, nagiging diabetic ka, sumasakit ang ulo mo, nadidepress ka, and you will agree that if you feel these things while you're working, Imagine mo, nagluluto ka ng pagkain kasi chef ka. Tapos, nararamdaman mo yung mga yan. Di ba? Yung kalidad ng trabaho mo, bababa. Mapapaalat yung fried rice mo. Dadami yung mantika ng, ng, ng mga ulam na niluluto mo. No? Kasi nga, hindi maganda yung iyong pakiramdam because of high levels of stress. Sabi pa ng isang statistics, workers with high stress levels, ano raw sila? Three times more likely to get colds, sisipunin, 68% more likely to develop heart disease, Aba, baka mag-lead pa yan sa heart attack, and 50% higher healthcare cost. Hindi rin maganda na ang mga empleyado stress sa isang kumpanya kasi pag magkasakit yung mga empleyado sa kumpanya, in a way, yung kumpanya gagastos para sa pagpapagamot ng mga empleyado nila, di ba? Lalong-lalo na yung mga empleyado na insured nung mga kumpanya. Yung mga kumpanya na nagpo-provide ng mga health cards. Oh. So, yung mga pera na, na binibigay ng kumpanya, eh lahat magagamit kasi halos lahat ng, ng kanilang empleyado, eh may sakit. Eh bakit ba nagkasakit? Eh kasi nga, sobra na ang stress sa opisina. Halos lahat ng mga empleyado ayaw nang pumasok because they know their workplace is the source of stress. So, we have to teach employees how to manage their stress well and at the same time we have to teach the owners of the company what to do to keep the stress levels low in the company at lahat yon tinuturo ng IO psychology isa pang issue na pinag-uusapan sa IO psychology is how do you improve performance ba diba? kasi mahalaga ang, impo- ang performance ng isang worker kasi dito nang gagaling yung profit whether or not a company will last, kung magsusurvive ba siya ng matagal o hindi, depende yan sa performance ng mga tao in that company. Dahil lahat masipag, dahil lahat maganda ang kalidad ng trabaho, ano nangyayari? Customers like that organization. Sinusuportahan tuloy ng mga tao yung organization na yon. Doon sila laging kumakain, doon sila laging nagpapagawa ng kotse, doon sila laging nagpapagupit, Diba? Doon sila laging nag enroll ng mga klase kasi yung mga customers nakita nila na maganda ang performance ng mga empleyado in that company. And when that happens, when customers choose one company over the other companies, ibig sabihin nun, yung kumpanya na pinili, kikita ng malaki. Diba? Profits will enter. And that profit, the profits that will enter the company is what will make that company stay longer. Kasi, syempre, meron silang pangsweldo sa mga empleyado nila. Diba? Yung extra money nila, nagagamit nila to further improve the services of the company. Makakabili sila ng mga bagong technology, makaka-afford sila na uh, ipadala sa training yung mga empleyado nila para mas lalong gumaling. So, the company gets better and better because of the profits that enters it. Pero yung kabaliktaran nito, kapag pangit ang performance. ba? Pangit ang performance ng kumpanya. Ang papangit ng feedback online na binibigay ng mga customers. What will happen if people read those negative comments? They will no longer avail the service of the company. Hindi na sila magpapagupit doon. Hindi na sila magpapagawa ng kotse doon. Hindi na sila kakain doon. Kasi pangit ang feedback eh. Eh bakit ba pangat yung feedback? Pangat yung performance sa so mga empleyado in that company. ba? Kaya alam nyo, this is a very important skill that we need to learn in IO psychology. What are the things that we need to do to improve the performance of people in a workplace? Lalong lalo na in the perspective of the owner of a company. ba? Ano ba yung mga dapat mong gawin para maengganyo mo yung mga nagtatrabaho sa'yo, naggalingan nila sa trabaho nila? Because the thing is, hindi lang lagi pera ang labanan eh. 
Diba? Because some some owners of a company, iniisip nila, eh, pera-pera lang yan, eh. Para galingan niya, taasan mo ang sweldo. Although, it's a very big part of it. Malaking parte ng employee, ng, ng, ng paggaling ng isang empleyado yung cash incentive. But it's not all about money. Because remember, ang nagtatrabaho sa'yo, tao. Diba? Tao ang nagtatrabaho. Hindi lang pera ang nagpapatakbo sa isip ng tao. There are other factors as well that will affect those workers. Sabi nga ni Jesus in the Bible, diba? man does not live by bread alone. O, hindi ka lang bigay ng bigay ng bread sa empleyado mo, bigay ka lang ng bigay ng cash incentive. Meron ka pang dapat ibang ginagawa o binibigay sa empleyado mo para galingan nila sa kanilang trabaho. Ang susi, the key to help employees improve their work performance, increase mo yung kanilang motivation. Pinag-usapan natin yan kanina, di ba? Dapat bilang isang bossing, bilang isang owner ng kumpanya, or kahit isang empleyado ka lang, di ba? Kinakailangan magaling ka o alam mo yung basics kung paano mo imomotivate yung sarili mo to work better, to improve your performance. So, dalawang side yan. The management should know what to do to motivate their employees and the employees should know how to motivate themselves to work better. Okay? Kaya yung employee motivation na yan, very important topic in the field of IO psychology. Sabi nga ni Peter Drucker, isa sa management gurus ng IO psychology, the task of leadership is to create an alignment of strengths, making a system's weaknesses irrelevant. Ibig sabihin ni Peter Drucker, one way to improve or to to increase the motivation of the employees, ano raw gagawin mo? Alignment of strengths. And I think that's true. A lot of employees, hindi nila ginagalingan o hindi lumalabas yung kagalingan nila in the workplace kasi hindi tugma yung ginagawa nila sa kung sino sila. Diba? Halimbawa, yung isang empleyado, introvert siya. Ayaw niya lagi ng maraming tao, pero yung pinapagawa mo sa kanya, magbenta. So, hindi siya aligned, hindi siya tugma. So, tuwing nagbebenta siya, hindi niya binibigay todo yung effort niya kasi hindi naman siya yun eh. Hindi naman niya personality yun eh. Diba? So, you have to make sure that for every job position that you have in your company, eh, naka-align yung psychological profile ng empleyado doon sa pinapagawa mo sa kanya. And when that happens, when the employee senses na yung pinapagawa mo sa kanya, eh, tugma sa kung sino siya psychologically, doon ngayon tumataas yung level of motivation, which will increase the level of performance. So, it's a very important skill to learn in IO psychology. Oh, it's, it's, isa pa to. Another important skill in IO psychology is teaching employees how to deal with office politics, di ba? How do you relate better with workmates? Teamwork. Isa sa mga bagay na sumisira sa teamwork, politika. Di ba? I'm sure yung mga nakikinig dito, no, na may ganyang experience, in every organizations that you go into, there will always be office politics. Kahit sabihin pa ng opisina mo na completely objective sila, walang palakasan dito, as human beings, it is in our nature to like some people and not like others. That's the origin of politics. Lahat ng workplace may politics. So instead of looking for a workplace na walang politics, kasi wala talagang ganun, eh kinakailangan matuto ka how to deal with it. Diba? Paano ba makisama sa opisina para hindi ka nabubwisit sa office politics? Because there will always be office politics. It's just a matter of how good you will be in dealing with this politics. IO psychology will teach you that. Diba? Kasi kapag hindi na-handle maayos ang office politics, it will affect the teamwork of a department. It will affect the teamwork of the organization, which will compromise the efficiency of that department. Diba? Kaya naman pala yung accounting department, mali-mali. Kaya naman pala yung accounting department, eh, mali-mali yung mga reports na binibigay o laging may delay 
eh kasi yung mga tao within that department, hindi magkakasundo, magkakaaway. Oh, kaya one way para maayos mo yon is i-improve mo yung kanilang relationship sa isa't isa. Diba? And that's one of the things that IO psychology is teaching. Paano i-improve yung relationship ng mga workmates sa isa't isa? How do you teach your, your employees to deal with office politics? All of those things are being discussed in IO psychology. Again, Peter Drucker emphasized on this. Sabi niya, teamwork is neither good nor desirable. It is a fact. Wherever people work together or play together, they do so as a team. Which team to use for what purpose is a, is a crucial, difficult, and risky decision that is even harder to unmake. Managements have yet to learn how to make it. How do you make your teams stronger? Within a company, it consists of different teams, different departments. How do you make sure na okay sila sa isa't isa? Okay? How do you make sure na the way they deal with politics is doing well? Again, hindi mo talaga matatanggal yung office politics eh. But if you give employees the necessary skills on how to manage office politics, how to deal with office politics, then mag improve yung relationships nila sa isa't isa which will increase the efficiency of the company. So in summary, that's what IO psychology is all about. Ulitin ko lang, we study the relationship between the psyche and the workplace. How the psyche affects the workplace, how the workplace affects the psyche. And why do we want to study the relationship between psyche and workplace to achieve efficiency? Para yung psyche natin habang nagtatrabaho is on its best mode to work. Pero may prerequisite. For us to achieve a, an efficient psyche at work, we need to learn the smaller skills. How to recruit the right one, how to manage stress, paano i-motivate ang mga empleyado, how do you work well with others, how do you deal with the boss. If we are able to master all these small skills, then definitely we are on our way that our psyche becomes efficient at work. So the next episodes that you're going to watch will talk about these things. Thank you for listening and 